welcome to this session on interactive lectures. During this session, we will be looking at some essential features of interactive lectures. Then we will look at some guidelines to ensure that our lectures are interactive. And finally, we will be looking at certain strategies that can help us make our lectures interactive. Hello, Ms. Pereira. You seem to have a sore throat yet again. Hello, Ms. Singh. Yes, this is becoming a regular feature nowadays. With four to five lectures daily and 90 students in each class, I see no solution in sight. Well, handling large number of students is certainly tedious and we cannot find an immediate solution for this. But I think you need to think of some strategies to make class more interactive. Such interactive lectures will help you deal with large classes more effectively. Really? Interactive lectures? Can you throw some more light on what you mean by interactive lectures, Miss Singh? Sure. Here are some essential features of interactive lectures. These lectures should be student-centered, where the emphasis is on learning. Is interactive lectures include individual and group activities. The students should be encouraged to ask questions and respond to questions. Students share a lot of their experiences. Peer discussions are also an essential feature of interactive lectures. And now, let's go on to some guidelines to ensure that our lectures are interactive lectures. The first guideline towards having interactive lectures is to establish learning goals. Now, you can establish your learning goals by giving the learning goals on a handout. Alternatively, if you are using a presentation, include your learning goal in that presentation. How does that help? For one, it helps students to know what exactly to expect during that lecture. And secondly, it helps the lecturer or the teacher to stick to his or her topic and not to digress away from the topic. We have here for you two examples. Look carefully at both these examples. Example one, during this unit, you will be introduced to basic concepts in statistics. Example 2. At the end of this unit, you will be able to calculate mean, mode and median for a given set of data. Now think which of these two is a better learning goal. Have you made up your mind? Well, if you have chosen the second one, you are right. Because the first one is a very general learning goal. The second example tells the student what exactly to expect during the course of that lecture. So the second example is a better example of a learning goal. The second important guideline is to begin with an overview. Now how does an overview help the learner? Well, you have all seen a jigsaw where different pieces fit together to make a complete picture? An overview does exactly that. When you give your students an overview of the lecture, it helps them to piece together different bits of information. It also helps them to subsume new material into material that they already know. Let's look at this with an example. Say for example, your students know about the digestive system. They know the different parts of the digestive system. And during a particular lecture, you are going to talk about the process of assimilation. Then the students will absorb this new knowledge, that is knowledge of assimilation, into their knowledge of what the digestive system is. That's how an overview helps students. Another important point that we need to remember 
is to avoid content overload. As a teacher, you can do that by identifying key points. You need to chunk content into small little suitable bits or little suitable subunits. It's wise to eliminate what is unnecessary and it's also wise to plan your entire unit well in advance. Another aspect that you need to keep in mind is who are my learners? Analyze your learners even before you get to class. What do my learners know? What do my learners need to know? All this will help you to put your content into small and manageable bits. Never forget that you are teaching a class. Your ultimate goal is to reach out to your students. So be aware of their entry behavior, their age. Use age appropriate vocabulary. Use vocabulary that they will be able to easily comprehend. And don't forget to spice your lecture with some illustrations, examples, preferably something from the learner's background. Another important thing that we ought to remember is to make our class interactive. You can make your class interactive by focusing on important issues and problems. Avoid just presenting factual information to students. In a way, it will be useful if you give your students some amount of synopsis or something in the form of handouts, students could go through that and analyze what is being conducted during the lecture. Get certain facts from the students. Remember, they have not come to your class like blank slates. They have come with their own vast experience. They have their own background knowledge. Capitalize on that knowledge. Involve your students in discussion and never forget the same activity being repeated for a long time becomes boring. So remember to change your activity, preferably after about 10 to 15 minutes. This will break monotony and help students to attend better. You must be eager to know some good strategies or some effective ways of promoting interactivity. Here is a list and each of these will be elaborated in due course. One, you could use small group discussions. You could use questions on a card, perhaps a video. At times you may think of using a think pair share session. Post-it notes also work wonderfully well. Then you have something called a one minute write. Role play can be used to promote interactivity. You could think in terms of analyzing a concept. Crosswords are interesting ways to promote interactivity. You could use generate your own examples as a strategy for promoting interactivity. Idea mapping is yet another strategy that can be used in a classroom to promote interactivity. And then we also have something called as identify the superlatives. Now, we look at each of these with the help of an example. Let's look at strategy number one, small group discussion. A small group could be anything like four to five members you could decide depending upon the strength of your overall class. Have all these members sit in a small group at an allocated place. Give them a topic that they need to discuss. Let there be one person functioning as the secretary or the recorder. The recorder keeps note of all the points that are being discussed by that small group. At the end of the discussion, have the secretary or the reporter report the discussions of that group to the entire class. In this way, the entire class knows what each of those groups has discussed. A very simple technique, a very economical technique that can be used in any classroom and for any subject and any topic. Yet another interesting strategy is questions on a card. Now what do you do to have this strategy in your class. 
let us say you are taking a lecture on poverty in India. So, somewhere in the middle of your lecture, you could take a break. Let each student have a card with him or her. On each of those cards, the student writes down one question pertaining to the topic. The student moves around in the class and seeks responses from fellow classmates. So, let us say a student has a question like, how is poverty related to women empowerment? And the student moves to two or three other students trying to get their responses. This will give the student insight to what the classmates are thinking about that question. This works very well because it helps to enhance creativity and critical thinking among every learner. Our next strategy is a very simple one use a video. These days, videos are easily available. So, what you can do as a teacher is screen a video before your class, ask your students to observe carefully and note down important points or maybe even questions that strike them when they are watching the video. At the end of the video, have your class share their views, their opinions, Maybe if it's a problem, they can share solutions to the problem and even ask their questions regarding what they have seen. But just keep in mind that the video is not too long, otherwise it's difficult to sustain attention. Preferably, the video could be say about 8 to 10 minutes. Avoid going beyond 10 minutes because then students tend to digress. In a country like India, Try to get videos in regional languages. If you are using videos in English, make sure that the accent is understood by the learners. So, in short, be aware of the background of the students when you are using a video. And it's always wise for a teacher to go through the video from start to end before the video is screened before the whole class. Here is another interesting strategy, the think, pair, share sessions. This is one of the cooperative learning techniques that many teachers like to follow. It is also called as a buzz session because just as you hear bees buzzing in a hive, similarly you will hear a kind of a learner's buzz. But do remember it is a very healthy buzz. So how does a think, pair, share session move along? Let us take it with an example. Suppose I am teaching my students about air pollution. So, I can leave my students with a question. Think of ways to minimize air pollution in a crowded city. During the think time, all that the students are expected to do is to think, think of ways. Then they share. In the share session, they will move to their neighbor, they will pair up with their neighbor and they will share with their neighbor their thoughts or their views on the question that is posed by the teacher. The neighbor too will share his or her views. So, in this way you get multiple views, your own views and the views of your friend. At the same time, it builds up tolerance, it builds patience, we learn to listen to one another's views and thus we can learn from each other in a very healthy ethos. Let us look at another interesting strategy, post-it notes. I am sure all of our classrooms have a lot of open space on the walls. What you need for this is one large notice board and lots of post-it notes. Give each of your students a post-it note, stop somewhere in the middle of your lecture, Ask them to write a doubt, a view, a suggestion, of course, that is related to the topic that they are studying. Put this post-it note on the assigned place. It could be a notice board, it could be a, any card paper or it could just be a chart paper. Other students should go, check out what are the questions on the post-it notes and put down their own views. If it is a question that is seeking a solution, Encourage students to put their solutions under the relevant question. At the end of it, by reading the question and by looking at the multiple views 
that are posted by all learners, everyone learns in an atmosphere of mutual sharing. Yet another strategy is the one minute write. At a suitable point, take a break in the lecture and ask the students to write down in one minute what they have learned in the preceding part. So all students will write a short summary of what they have learned and also invite students to write one question or one doubt that they have in mind. At the end of it, the teacher might invite a few students to stand up and share their summaries. So that helps to learn from what others have summarized. Ask a few students to share the questions that they have in mind. Now these questions that are in the mind of learner A could also be in the mind of learner B and therefore either the teacher or the class may answer these questions and help the solving of these doubts. Isn't that wonderful? A one minute write telling you about the lecture. This is a strategy that will help the kinesthetic learners in your class. A role play. Now a role play is not dramatization. Dramatization is where the dialogues and the scene has been planned earlier. A role play asks you to get into the situation on the spot. Let me explain this with an example. Let us say you are teaching political science you're teaching your students about the role of citizens and you put forth before them a role play. It could be something like this. There are elections in your village and a politician who is standing for election comes asking you to vote for him. He's ready to pay you money if you vote for him. Ask one person to be the politician. He plays the role of the politician and ask the other students to be the villagers. Let them spontaneously have a dialogue. It will help you see how students can react, how they can respond to a given situation. After the role play is completed, you can discuss the role play. Each member who participated in the role play will explain why he or she took up that role. They will elaborate why they said whatever they said during the role play. This is an extremely good strategy for value clarification and value building. And of course, it breaks the monotony of the lecture and makes your interaction very important. Here's another interesting strategy, the strategy of concept analysis. Now, what is concept analysis? There are certain concepts that students already are familiar with before they enter the class. Now, if you as a teacher go on to elaborate and explain this concept, it's going to be very, very boring. Therefore, decide if they know this concept beforehand. If you feel so, go in for concept analysis, which means you have the concept before the students, ask the students to put forward their views, you could give them certain sub points and in this manner the concept is analyzed building on what the students already know. Here's an example. Let's say as a teacher of sociology you're talking of stratification in Indian society. All of us know what is stratification in Indian society. We all come to class with our own notions about stratification. Therefore, rather than explain about stratification, you can bring interactivity into the classroom by asking students to clarify what they mean by stratification, where have they experienced stratification, in what way has this stratification affected their own lives. They could even bring in examples that they have read in newspapers or seen on television or some other media and in this manner, the concept is analyzed, building on the experiences of the learner. The teacher is simply a facilitator in this kind of concept analysis. We all love little breaks when we can play or we can have a little puzzle. What about having a crossword puzzle in the middle of your class? Why not? So you have a crossword grid 
with a lot of letters. Those letters either vertically, horizontally or diagonally should form a word related to your topic. You could have say 10 words, put on one crossword grid. Encourage your learners to identify those words. Once they identify a word, they could encircle it. Say that word aloud in the class and elaborate upon it. Like, suppose I'm teaching them about cell biology. And let us say one of the words there is plasma membrane. And the student identifies this word plasma membrane. So the student gets up and says, ma'am, I found this word plasma membrane. The teacher then invites the student to explain what he or she means about plasma membrane, maybe its functions, maybe its structure. So thus even something like a small crossword game can be introduced to bring in interactivity into our daily teaching. Friends, if you look at Bloom's taxonomy of learning objectives, you will realize that the highest there is that of creating. We expect our learners to create because that tells us that they have understood and they have assimilated what they have learned. Student generated examples is one strategy that will ensure creativity in the class. What you could do for student generated examples is to have post-it notes where students could come and write their own examples. Here is one case where student generated examples can be used very effectively. A teacher of psychology is talking about defense mechanisms and she's already taught the students what are the various defense mechanisms. So she just puts the titles of the defense mechanisms, substitution, rationalization or whatever may be and the students come and write down their own examples below each of those subtitles. These kind of student generated examples show you that the students know to apply whatever they have learned. They are able to connect classroom learning with knowledge outside the classroom. Mind maps or concept maps are a wonderful way to let us have insight into what our students have understood about the topic that they have learned. So after you've taught a topic, or maybe after completing a particular subunit, ask your students to put down graphically, diagrammatically, whatever they have learned in the form of a concept map. These concept maps can be created individually and then maybe the students could show their concept maps to one another. Alternatively, get them into small manageable groups of three or four and ask them to create concept maps which they create as a group and then display on the class notice board for the other groups to see. Here is another interesting way to introduce interactivity in your lectures, a discussion with students. But this is a very focused discussion. Ask your students to write down the most interesting part of the lecture. Ask them to make a note of the most difficult part of the lecture, the most surprising part of the lecture perhaps the most disturbing part of the lecture and maybe that part of the lecture that they wish to learn more about. This is useful because it gives you insight into the learning process that the students have undergone. A wise teacher will use this as feedback. Like for example, the most difficult part of the lecture. Let us say if 70% of your class has noted the same subunit or the same subtopic as the most difficult part of the lecture, then that tells you as a teacher need to work on that part. Find out why it is the most difficult part and maybe the next time you are teaching the same unit, you could improve that particular section of your lecture. Let's say 80% of your students wish to know more about some particular aspect of the lecture then you need to ask yourself, did you do enough justice to this part of the lecture when you taught? How can you give them something more that they wish to learn about? So discussion with students is interesting because it tells us what the students have learned, how they have learned, how much they have learned. But most important, it gives us insight into the way we have taught that particular content. Friends, I'm sure all these strategies that you looked at 
have given you insight into a number of ways that can be used to make our lectures interesting and interactive. All these strategies that were explained before this were all low tech strategies. Except for videos, we haven't used any high end technology. But these days, we have a lot of technology easily available to us. Available to us at a very economical rate. So our next session will tell us about blended learning where we are going to use a blend of traditional as well as technology enhanced learning.